Welcome to Hearsay. I'm Diane Neal, your host, and with me, as always, is my trust friend, good buddy, and guy whose hair is not exactly how he'd like it today, Danny. How you doing, Danny? It's good. Yeah, you good? I'm good. I don't mean to call I'm out like, your hair I'm like talking that. Talk about my hair. I know. I'm like, actually, I like my hair today. Okay. Okay, your hair is good. Your hair is good today. I thought you didn't like your hair today because you were messing with it a little bit. Okay. Can I can I ask oh, you no, right I off just, the? I had it in yeah? the bun and it was it was a little awkward, but. Well, because all man buns are awkward. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I love me a good man bun. I'm Do you honest. really? I, I'm I'm always like. like Buns of steel, man buns. Mm, buns of steel. You know who can really rock uh, a man bun? And it's the first man bun that I ever saw that I was like, okay, it makes a little more sense to me now. Can you guess? Um, was it the guy from Brokeback Mountain? I can't remember his name right now. Uh, no, Jason Momoa. Oh, Jason Momoa has, yeah. Yeah. He still a man bun. Yeah, he can. Not even my type, but I'm like, mm, I get it now. I finally get it. You have a little yeah. J- Jason Momoa going on yourself there. You have a little Jason Momoa. Oh, thank you. It's true. Yeah. I don't know if I would call Jason Momoa my type per se, but I would say right? basically every type is my type. So <laughs> it's close But he's definitely beautiful. Even if he's not your type. It's like, he's, like yeah, he's cool. I hate Whitney Houston's music, right? Like, I hate it. But it doesn't change the fact that she is extremely talented. Like, I'm aware of how talented she is. So, like, that's okay. Like, you can appreciate yeah. without the, it being your thing. Okay, Danny, just right. really quickly, I need you to pick a color. I'm going to give you some choices here. Okay? Okay. L'orange, orange, yellow. Okay. Red. Mm-hmm. White. Okay. Or blue. So, or blue. See, it's a difficult choice for me mm-hmm. because... Yep. I feel like each one of those color categories that you named yes. have so many different colors within them. There's like, for instance, with yellow, you have everything from like a beautiful pastel yellow. Okay. To like I'm gonna Donald I'm gonna Trump's try and tape. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> but, that's right. Okay, I'm gonna try and show you what the colors are, the variations are, without you knowing what it is that I'm holding up. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Tell me when you can see them. Okay. Ooh, okay. Um I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the white. <gasps> okay. All right. Stay there. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, my friend. Okay. Hold on. Just you just hang on. I said hang on, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is like the worst thing we could possibly do for the audio listeners. So I'm so sorry to the audio listeners, but you're going to have to trust us. The white was the right us. decision. Yeah. For Danny, it was the right decision. And then, okay. And for, we'll, for, we'll actually see. for Pyro Neal, it's like, hold on, hold on. Cause I got to get it. Cause I, you know, my voice and I can sing it. <gasps> it's the third night of Hanukkah. Oh, Yay. oh, come on, light it up. So basically from the AM, PM, which people have everywhere else, which is also, um, yay, getting sparky. Uh, I got this $3. All right, wait, are you ready? Hold on. Why, why is it not? Isn't it making sound? Hold on. Okay. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Happy Hanukkah. Oh, that's awesome. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you. It got it's my first Hanukkah in Israel. That got a lot spark. Wow. Wow. We got a folder. We got a folder. Ah. Oh, Uh-oh. it burns. Mom, it burns. Um, dang. <laughs> well, I need to edit that out. Or are you public, publicly in Israel? At this point, who gives a d-? Honestly, Danny. <laughs> okay. Who gives a d-? Who gives a damn? Just wanted to make sure. 
Yeah, no, it's fine. Where am I? That's where I am. I'm in Israel, and I'm enjoying my first uh, my first Hanukkah. Hello, Israel. And oh, that's I, amazing. So, I mean, okay, so what is the um, what is the standard procedure? Like, do you light the candles every single day, or do you leave them lit for as long as possible and just replace them as you go? It depends. Like, no, for the most part, for the most part, basically. Which it'll, I'll do there. Look, there's only one white one left. It's real special. Um, so, you know, most people have like beautiful Judaica, right? Like sterling silver, things that like menorahs that have been passed down for generations and things like this. Um, I have some beautiful ones at home, but since they're not here, I've got this wonderful that's made out of like what I would call, I shouldn't say this, abortion quality kind of coat hanger material. It's more relevant than ever before. Yeah, it's a very thin. Um, so basically, this is the shamash, right? So you like this is the one that you light all the other ones with, and then at, at sundown every like the night of Hanukkah, you use this one. You start with the right, and you light this one, right? And then you say three blessings the first night, and then the second night you say two blessings, right? So then, and the third night, and then you work your way across, and obviously. Um, these will probably stay lit for another 30 seconds. That's that's really all they've got in them. Some people do these uh-huh. really, some people have menorah with uh, really cool olive oil, little thing mm-hmm. socket that you can put like a real olive oil lamp in that will burn continuously. Oh, wow. Full yeah. Maccabee style, but um, not me. Not me. That's awesome. Yeah. And so every night I've. You yeah? said it's the wishes. But no, wishes were not mentioned at all. But if you'd like to make a wish, you're absolutely more than welcome to. Danny. I was fixing a recording issue for a second. I'll be honest, and then I was like, "This was the worst time for me to space out." I was like, "I'm just gonna pretend this is like a birthday cake." Here, you, you can. I know you can't blow it, but it's it's really weird. So, like this, this very inexpensive like nine shekel menorah. Um, once they get down into the little, the end, they they just start like kind of sparking and then they smoke something crazy. So it's a really good thing that Israelis are not that fond of smoke detectors, which is <laughs> pretty, pretty upsetting. <laughs> kind of scary. Uh, kind of scary, but whatever. And um, so I've had a lot of adventures in the last couple of weeks. What about you? Are you about to head off on an adventure, Danny? I am about to head off on an adventure. <gasps> Tell me everything. Um, so I'm going to start out in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And then it's a big place. There, like what part of Mexico? Like where you gotta gotta give me uh, details. I'm doing three, maybe four cities while I'm there. Um, Guadalajara, Monterrey, Monterrey. Monterrey. And, yeah. And uh, Mexico City. Mexico City. Uh, and the, and then I Mexico. Make a, yeah. I, and then I might make like a quick stop in Chihuahua because I've never seen that place. Uh, and I'm I say I've that in a that really annoying really... way. Too. Chihuahua. 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 Oh my gosh. And right on cue, the Chihuahua. dog shakes. Chihuahua. <laughs> Chihuahua. Seriously, there's nothing um, worse than a white person saying things like this. So just know that I'm aware. I know. I like. I don't know where I fall on the spectrum. <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> it's like it's not I cool. Don't know if I should just do the gringo thing, or if I should try and like relate to my heritage or something. Gosh, that's a really so, tough one, isn't it? Okay, it's a you know chihuahua because you've never been there. Yeah, I think it, if I'm speaking Spanish, I'm gonna at least try and like make the attempt. Yeah, it would be weird if you were like, hola, como estas? Hola, como estas? <laughs> Muy bien, Anyways. gracias. <laughs> like, it would be it would be very strange. Although, uh, I'm uh, like, look at this. And by yeah. the way, you tell everyone like, hey, we're doing the podcast. First of all, no one takes me seriously. I wonder why. It's because I'm always in a robe with no makeup on. Why wouldn't they take me seriously about doing the podcast, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we're doing pretty good lately. I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of us for being a new are we doing, channel. We are like almost. Are we doing at fairly 5, well? Oh, especially with our with our our 
our breaks. This is still, this is actually burning longer than ever. I'm pretty nice. excited. Okay, so tell me tell me okay, more about the trip. All right, so then um, after Mexico, then I'm going to probably go to Colombia, and then for the cocaine. Peru. Yep, for the ayahuasca. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. And then Santiago, Chile. By the way, you. Do you know that like Peru is imploding at the moment, right? You do know that, right? Have you turned on the news? Yeah. Okay. Because a so, lot of tourists are being rescued by like SWAT teams that are flying in from their own countries. Like just so you know. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that by the time I get there, because it's gonna be like a three month thing, I'm hoping that things are gonna calm down a little bit by then. But uh we will see because you know what? You head there, I'll head to the Gaza Strip with like with an Israeli flag t-shirt on. Let's just see what happens. Okay. Let's just let's just <laughs> yeah. see what happens. <laughs> Honestly, like I so one of the one of my main goals for going is I wanna mm-hmm. um I wanna document the experience, but also I wanna um talk about specific issues and get different people's opinions while I'm there. So um You're gonna do a little like on the spot journalism. I like this. Yeah, I mean like I'm not a journalist, you know, so I don't really know what I'm doing, but I definitely can want I, to Can get, I tell you like, something? I'm not sure. View. I'm not sure any journalist knows what they're doing. <laughs> well, um, I've never done it before, so it could be a complete disaster. But I really do want to just kind of get like a real feel for what these places are from like the eyes of locals, you know? So, um, so with that said, actually... If anyone, can I, can I plug myself? Am I allowed to plug, plug yourself? Can you, wait, can you, like, <laughs> I'm listening. Plug yourself. I'm turning on the air conditioning because I just started sweating like an old lady. Hold on. Start plugging, Danny. Okay. Start plugging. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm just getting so, the remote. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. So, yeah, if anyone wants to um, follow me on this adventure and yeah. learn about the various places that I'm going to go to, yeah. uh, follow me on TikTok. I think that's where I'm going to, that's where, like, my, linked mm. my link tree and all of that is going to be at um i'll also probably have a youtube channel that i'm launching here in the next month or so um so yeah stay tuned for that it's gonna oh, be oh that's fun. so exciting danny i'm gonna yeah. follow your beep, 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 beep. I, i'm gonna I'm follow your adventure. interviewing well we'll see who i can get gain access to but i'm planning on interviewing like tra- transgender people um sex workers um just like everyday people from different, I guess, like political backgrounds. Um, all the people that we love. All the people that like we disabled love. Disabled people. Yeah. Um, people of different like racial backgrounds. Just like to get like a lot of marginalized order. people. Like, yeah, the breadth and scope of what just, yeah, everyone. Yeah. Who is that? Because we don't, because we don't really talk about what it's like to, um, I guess, like live in these countries just as an everyday person but also as a person who maybe is not the first like stereotype that you think of when you think of these countries right can i can i tell you what i i'm gonna guess it's like yeah tell me i'm I'm gonna guess it sucks (laughs) yes it's like you're the one trans person in like a small village anywhere on earth like it's gonna suck like it's just not gonna be like, no, it'll be really good to get the voices of, of all these people who, uh, you know, really don't have a voice, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And um, honestly, like, I wish I was going to go all crazy and go into, like, all these small little towns and everything. But really, I'm just hitting the, the major hubs. Um, in Peru, depending on how things are going, I might do, like, the Sacred Valley type thing. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. I know that you've been to Peru several times, right? I have, I have, I love it. I love it, 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 I love it. You know, the only place I haven't been, which I'm dying to go, is I'm dying to go up to the north in Peru. So I haven't been, I haven't been there yet. But yeah, lots of the, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those places that's like delightful and magical and the people are amazing and the archaeology is insane. And all the new stuff is incredible. Even this, even this, it's not even just like, not even talking about like Inca era or like Nazca kind of stuff, even from the Spanish colonialism, which isn't necessarily great, but it's a part of the history, right? So you've got some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen in my life and uh, all fantastic, all fantastic. 
and it's a bummer it that it, it's imploding <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. I hope yeah. I hope that people stay safe and that it gets better fast, not just for your trip, but just so less people die. Danny, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not me crazy. Agreed. I know. So hopefully <laughs> uh, things calm down a little bit, but uh, even if they don't, I mean, I might still go. You're talking to someone that likes that likes going to a war zone. So, you know, yeah. you know what? I'm just kind of like, if I die, I die. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh my gosh, Danny's going fatalistic. <laughs> it's a it's a suicide mission. Like dumb stuff. Okay, so this friend of mine is like, oh, yeah, I watched this girl on TikTok, and my daughters love her. And she's amazing. And she swims with tiger sharks. And I'm like, what? And like, yeah, she swims with tiger sharks. And I'm like, Danny, yes. I've had two friends killed by tiger sharks. One of them was eaten twice. The first time it didn't kill him, like 30 years later, finally got him. Tiger sharks. Oh, my gosh. Dangerous. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. They sh- I'll sounds... send you this link of this. I don't know. Oh, I wish I could send it to you now. Is I don't know if we can screen share because you know you're the master of that stuff and I am the master of none of that stuff. Um, look up TikTok idiot that swims. It's not just like girl that swims with tiger sharks. It's insane. And so, like, my friend was like, Oh yeah, my girls and I are gonna go do this. And I'm like, why? Well, I'll do almost anything in the world, Danny, right? Like I'll do almost anything on earth. I have done almost anything on earth. This is not something, hi buddy, hi doggy. This is not something that I would ever do in a million years. And I guarantee I can predict with a hundred percent certainty now. I will bet you every dollar that I will ever make for the rest of my life that this girl is going to die by tiger shark. There's just no way around it. Please look it up. Please look it up, Danny. Please look it up. From world-renowned shark researcher and conservationist. She's not. She's a world-renowned moron. <laughs> we have a visitor. Hi, Poppy. Hi. Who is that? Who is that? This is Sammy. Oh. Hi, Sammy. She, she's the one that's always making noise in the background. Hi, Sammy. I want to hold you like a baby. She's a handful. That that friend texted me right now, to the one that sent it to me, and I was just like, I was just like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, recording podcast with Danny. We're talking about that dumb <laughs> shark suicide girl right now. <laughs> okay, I'm watching. She's this. not dumb. She's not dumb. She just wants to die in a horrific way. She's helping educate the world. She's helping educate people on how to die by tiger shark. Yeah, I feel like this is such a bad idea. You know what I mean? Like, don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. Look at that. Tell me she's not going to die this way. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this, Danny? I think this is super stupid. Um, I do know that sharks are less dangerous than they're often. Like, they're really scary, but they're actually not super likely to kill you. Uh, like, I heard that you have a bigger chance of dying of lightning but I don't know, but that's like under normal circumstances in which you're not actively like trying to swim with sharks, right? That is correct. So. And and not only that, right? So there are 8 billion people on land, okay? Lightning hitting the land. 8 billion people. <laughs> Statistically, there's more of a chance. You know, you got 8 billion yeah. chances to hit someone with lightning. Storms frequent, lightning mm-hmm. frequent in storms, people everywhere. Okay? Yeah. So you, you got yeah. that. And then you've got a very, 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 very small percentage of the population that is in the water generally. Uh, and in tiger shark infested water, not as often. And uh, I love people. So, you know, I think if you, if you weighed it for things like that, I would, I would. And yeah. And by the way, what she's doing is the equivalent of like, oh, oh, there's a huge lightning storm coming. I'm going to get a giant metal rod and go hang out outside holding it to the sky. (laughs) Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> but then again, can you say your famous quote? Which one's that? Oh my oh, gosh, no but one. I'm not a scientist because I am not a scientist. <laughs> I think I'm right about things, but I'm not a scientist. I always think I'm right about stuff, Danny. You never know, this could be a KFC part two. (laughs) No, I don't know. That was, and you know what? Because that KFC thing, it wasn't urban legend. It was all just science-based. You know what I mean? I was like taking the chicken apart. I was testing it under my little microscope. It was pretty exciting. Um, No, but honestly, like, here's the thing. I wouldn't push my luck, even if, the chances of a shark attacking you in a controlled environment or like an environment like that where you're swimming with them is like only like 0.5%. It's still that's a still lot. 0.5% way too much. Yeah, you know? that's like out of 200 people, one person is going to get eaten by a shark. Like that's not, no. Exactly. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. It just seems like such an unnecessary death. For future death is unnecessary. You know what's scarier than sharks though? Tell me. Barracudas. Oh, yeah, they are. Because they will go after your ass. Oh, yeah, they will chase you, too, and they are fast. They're fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they can kill you. Yeah, they can kill you. Like, they kill you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of... more Moray eels, also scary. Eels in general, I'm not a fan of eel, <laughs> unless it's in my sushi. <laughs> but, like, eels scare the <laughs> out of me, because... It's like it's like a snake, but in a much scarier situation where you can't yeah. get away from them. Yeah, you know? and usually fatter. Yeah. And yeah. then the ones remember... that are like electric can be like, like that's just terrifying. Oh yeah. <laughs> Although like the electric eels, I heard they do have the moves. They can do the electric slide or something. <laughs> I didn't piece that one together. By the way, I was in an alley earlier today feeding a stray cat, because as one does, there was a pile of poppers like I have never seen. And I was like, I want to see what's going on in this alley. <laughs> um, did you yeah. did you take any? Uh, I didn't. They were pick just like any. free and ripe for the taking and you didn't. Take no, any? no, no. I think they were all used. I'm not really sure because I, I have very limited popper experience, but I'm pretty sure they were They're all multi use. Are they? Yeah. Maybe the stray cats were using them. Sammy's funny. (laughs) Okay. I got to tell you about this thing I did do this week, which was so crazy. So I basically like know one person in Israel and he's awesome. And he's like, he's in his sixties and his wife's hilarious and his kids are my age and he's super, super cool. And I love hanging out with them. And he's just like trying to help and be sweet and nice. Not like creepy all right. Like I met his family. Mm-hmm. So he was like, look, my nephew, my nephew lives in Tel Aviv. You know, you're not going anywhere. You don't know anyone. He's a lawyer. So maybe like, you know, and I'm like, are you trying to, he's like, no, no, no. I'm trying to set you up. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're, yeah. Your, your nephew's not my type. And he's like, no, no, you're, you're definitely not my nephew's type. And I was like, what does that mean? But anyway, and, uh, but he's like, you know, just be fun to do something. So his his nephew texts me and he's like, hey, my uncle told me to call you, which is like the worst. But like, whatever, I can take the humiliation. I'll take the pity, like, like excursion, because like I need some a pity excursion. So it's like, oh, yeah. And he's like, what do you like to do? I'm like, honestly, I don't know anything about where I am. So I would I'm up for anything. And he's like, okay, well, tomorrow night I'm going to this ecstatic dance. And he's like, if you want to join me. And I was like, oh, sure. And he's like, okay, here's the link to buy tickets. And I was like, the ticket linked it. He's like, okay, I got you a ticket. And it starts like 8 p.m. So I'm thinking ecstatic rant, like dance. Like maybe that's just like Israeli to say a rave, right? But like, I'm like, 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. Like who's rocking out at like 8? None of it made sense, right? So I'm very (laughs) happy that. And I'm like, I don't even have clothes for this. And I was like, that doesn't really matter. Um, So any Hoosier, I am very grateful that I look it up. Wait, it's almost worth like reading the description. Hold on. Like it was so hilarious. And I was like, that is absolutely not what I expected. Hold on. Hold on. Holding. Holding. Dang it. Hold on. Hold on. Keep hold. Hold on, Danny. Ah, okay. You ready? Organized, spontaneous, that seems like an oxymoron, 
organize spontaneous dance practices, participants at contemporary ecstatic dance events, are paid entry events, and usually share an agreement of no drugs or alcohol. Sweet, usually. fine by me. Yeah, they usually <laughs> share an agreement of no drugs or alcohol. Fine with me, fine with me. Not my, not my bad. No shoes, cool. No talking, okay. sweet. And respect for consent in partnering in touch, including a hand on heart or a crossed arm signal when the dancer is not wanting a partner. Many ecstatic dance events start and end with a sharing circle, and some have altars and journals for expressive writing. And in Portland, Oregon, even have an epiphany bell. Dancers can ring at a particularly elevated moment, which is usually met by cheers. Oh, okay. So I was like, I was like, okay, I need to go buy some fitness clothing because that's what this is going to be, right? This is going to be some sort of fitness event. And I was fully yeah. prepared to make fun of this thing. By the way, so I meet his nephew, who like I said, is this like high powered attorney and couldn't be more fit, like super handsome. At first I was like, is he gay? Like, cause he was like just way too put together. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh no, he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys that is, um, comes across as just like a little bit effeminate. So he's not threatening and like, just like vacuum hoovers in like 22, 23 year old chicks, just like, boom, boom, boom. you know, like just can't get, like, can't get enough. Right. Like, and I'm Dang. like, Oh, I know this kind of guy. Wow. But so this is the best. So, so there's, there's a little, a little stray cat that's really been breaking my heart that lives in the alleyway, the one where I found all the poppers. And so, and it looks like Belvis. It's like a tiny, tiny, tiny version of Belvis. And so I'm like, oh, buddy. So every day I go over and I feed it dinner. So at least it's getting one square meal a day. Aww, yeah. And the other day it had a buddy with it. And this nearly, Danny, it nearly killed me. It was this beautiful little black kitten who had, had a severely broken back leg. And I was just like, I am going to die from the pain. And I went in and I got another yeah. can of food and I gave it. And I was like, and I was like, if you let me pick it up, because apparently here in Israel, the, the, all the, the wild cats are protected. So if you take it to the vet, like they'll fix it up for free. And then mm -hmm. they'll spay and neuter it and they'll put it back on the streets where it was. So I was like trying to get this little black cat and he wouldn't come near me, but he ate the food. So I was like, okay. And he just looked like he was in so much pain and he was killing me. So the next mm -hmm. night I'm going to the dance thing. And so um, I bring down two cans of cat food because I'm like, okay, I'm going to feed little mini velvets and little, little wounded black cat. And hopefully like I can earn his trust. I could take him to the bed. And sadly, Little black cat wasn't there. Oh. It was he was gone. So um so it was so sad. And so um this hot sexy like lady killer lawyer and I are walking into basically what's the Lincoln Center of Israel. Like it's this amazing like dance complex. Like it's crazy. Like this isn't like a real place. Like this thing is happening. I just did that. In like a real, <laughs> it's just awesome. And we're walking up, we're walking into this gorgeous like arena and this, that, and this little kitten comes up because these cats are everywhere. And I reach into my purse. I'm like, oh, and I pull out a can of friskies. So not only, Danny, am, am I like the creepy old lady who doesn't even own anything to exercise <laughs> in, but also can pull out a can of a friskies right out of her purse and then i was like trying to explain i'm like uh i don't normally have cat food in my purse i aspire to be you <laughs> <laughs> i just want to be the <laughs> i just want to be the person that carries cat food around all the time as you, a just if, in case if i could have like just captured the look on his face right so then we get in there right and they start every every um every one of these ecstatic dances with cacao so there's a guy like serving cacao because it's you know this good natural stimulant and and it's not like sweetened or anything but you're just like mm -hmm. and then and uh everyone's like 
you know, like starting to warm up and people are like doing we- like yoga positions and like crazy ones, you know, where like one leg is there and one leg is there and they're like doing the splits in the air. And, you know, <laughs> as, as everyone knows, you know, um, because I was sick, I put on some weight in the last couple of years. And so like a lot of it's come off like, in the last like two months. However, you know, uh, not as limber. as I'm, So I'm like, you know, like doing like old man <laughs> stretches, you know, like while everyone else is like got their legs over their own shoulders and they're like walking. <laughs> it's just like, and then, and there's an altar in the middle and, and it was like, and so the nephew, the lady killer, let's just call him lady killer that seriously, if I could have bottled that look when he, I pulled that can out of my purse, it was like such it's like it was a mix of like contempt, disgust, and confusion. It was like it was brutal. <laughs> so, so anyway, so um, did you at least make a pussy magnet joke? <laughs> I don't think that would have gone down too well, would it? I don't know if he would have gotten it. I don't know. I mean, his English was great, but I'm like. How good was it? Uh oh. But it was really funny because even the girls checking us in were like, <laughs> I was like, wow, he's got something going on. He's definitely like carrying cat food in his purse. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I get the pussy magnet thing. Um, so, anyway, Danny, we were, so then there's like a killer DJ. So, anyway, he's like, Do you go to the altar and like set your intention. And I was like, wow. And I love, like, I don't like cynics, right? Like if you're going to do something, go 150%, right? Like give it a whirl, like give it a whirl. So I go and I sit there and I'm like, I'm going to set my intention. And I just start like sobbing and I'm like, wow. Cause I'm like, there's a lot of patchouli and you know, there's already a good beat going. It's like another few hundred people kind of filter in. And I'm like, I'm just going to like give it up to the world. And I'm like, okay, I should probably share this cushion with someone. I'm going to get up. And then they give you like, and it was all in English, the instruction. So, but they were like, okay, everyone, you're just not talking because those moments of discomfort, you know, when you're at a dance club and with your friend, the moment you feel uncomfortable or self-conscious, you turn to a friend and you're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And you make a comment or you talk about somebody else and no. In this discomfort, you must be in your body. We start slow. And so it's like all these waves, right? And so they kind of guide you and there's no talking. And so you just start and you, and you like feel it. And then you, you know what I didn't realize, Danny, how my life starting out when I was a kid until like being a model all the way around the world and act. And it's probably, you love to go dancing, right? Sure. Okay. I do, but, th- but I haven't been in, I haven't been in, in years and I forgot how much of my life was like defined by like, par- like dancing, partying doesn't mean like the drugs not right. But like partying and, right. and it was like, I could see through the decade and it was like, everyone was in their own vibe. Everyone was, there was like no shame. People were like rolling around. It was crazy. It was the sweatiest thing. I, I, some people like he kept coming by jumping like a kangaroo. I was like, let's go. Then this one, this cute little twink was like, he, because I'm like soft and different now, everyone there had these like hard bodies. Right. And yeah. so like now I've got like this soft, like earth mama body and like people would come up and they'd be like, cause you could only make eye contact. Right. So they'd be like, you know, do you mind? And I'd be like, you know, and like people would just like, they just want to like feel that, you know, the softest and you go like back and yeah. forth, you know what I mean? And then like you yeah. pick them up and put them down and like spin and you have these moments. And then it was fun because like when, you know, someone you were done with, you know, like someone jamming and, mm-hmm. the, and ever, it was always like kind of at the same time, we'd just be like, you know, like a little thank you. And yeah. it was, I cannot explain. I cannot, I cannot I was teaching like shul on Shabbat and I was like, the lesson was about Malachi and like all I was talking about was this ecstatic dance. And it has been now almost a full week. I'm still sore. Okay. I'm still (laughs) sore. Like I haven't, I cannot move. 
It was, I cannot recommend it enough. Apparently they have these all over the world. It was, Danny, if you get a chance to go, go. I would love to. That sounds, honestly, that sounds super fun. Like, I'm not a huge dance person, but um, just that being what it is, like, it sounds like a very spiritual experience, and like a very, it, like, communal. Oh, my God. It was amazing. And if you needed a break, you just went back to, like, the altar. Like, you, t- you chilled at the altar. And then it was, um, I laughed, I cried. I have never, because I haven't really been into this body since it came around, right? Because I'm like, whose is this? This is not my body. I don't know. Right? And it was like the first time I like felt in this body and I felt like Aww. totally present. Yeah, all these things I usually make Good. fun of, but I was like into it and like yeah. other people appreciating it and like just like having yeah. so much fun. And I get it. Like I was high as a kite leaving this place. That's awesome. So did you did you hit it off with this guy? Oh no, not at not at all. Um <laughs> like I, I mean he was great. Like if at any time he wants to go do anything, like I think there like there's some desert rave coming up and he's like, Do you wanna go? I was like, Absolutely, like sign me up. He's like, This one there'll yeah. be lots of ketamine. And I'm like, Yeah, no, not my thing. You can keep the ketamine <laughs> for yourself. Like I'm cool. Yeah. But um the, speaking of ketamine, so this was like the coolest. So one of my my best girlfriends of decades, are you puking right now? I'm burping, apparently. Okay, that's not that bad. It's not that bad. So um, one of my best girlfriends of decades. So she lives in Portland. And she's actually, immediately when I was arriving at th- the ecstatic dance, she was going into like ketamine therapy. You know what? They're doing a lot of therapy now yeah. with ketamine for like PTSD and trauma. Right. And I was like, I was like, dude, this, this doesn't even seem to be on. I don't know what's happening here. So I was like, dude, dude, I'm going to this thing. And I'm like, I'm going to reach out to you through the universe. If it's not going to interrupt your therapy, come and find me. We'll meet halfway around the world in our minds. And I know that sounds ridiculous. Totally could see her. Hi, buddy. I could like see her in therapy. And like in my mind, I'm like, dude, I got your back. And she's like, I'm with you. I'm like, I got your back. Like, we were That's having awesome. this. It's totally. And like, I called her on the way home and I was like, dude, she's like, no, I could see you. I was like, Frick, I could see you too, man. I'm like, that was awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I believe in that kind of stuff too. Like, you can be connected to people in ways that we can't really explain. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, I don't know. Like, I mean, look at the Nobel Peace Prize in science that was won this last year, where they basically talked about how there's like connections between matter and we don't understand. Oh, in, in how. physics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, we have no idea how or why, but things are neither yeah. local nor real. And like, everything's interconnected. And right. And things are simultaneously in different places in the same place. And like, time is omnipresent yeah it's just this whole thing and so i was like well you know um if we're both going to be in kind of altered states in for different in different capacities where we're concentrating on this stuff and i'm like let's meet up and I'm like yeah. wow we did and i'm like ain't that cool <laughs> yeah that's, that's cool so if Aww. you get a chance to go like start looking them up because it's it was i cannot wait to go again i cannot wait to go again I remember I had, so like your experience of you, like when you got there, how you immediately just started crying. Mm -hmm. Um, I had Reiki done to me once. Oh yeah. And, and I like, I don't really believe in Reiki in a way. Although what I believe is that like positive vibes are never bad. Right. Right. Anything that works, if it works. Right. Like, no. Yeah. 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 Even if it's just a placebo or whatever it is, like I'm for it. If it's going to give you something that you're craving or that you're needing. Um, so I had this friend who's like a little bit out there. They were like talking about satellites in the skies mm-hmm. and like, you know, well, all sorts of crazy. And that's why we make fun. Yeah. That's why it's hard to, <laughs> you know. So, but I was like, all right, well I'll entertain them and I'll let them do their thing, you know? And they came over and I think we did a little bit of yoga and then they started doing Reiki on me and I just started bawling. Like I just started crying so much. And I think what it was, was I think I just hadn't felt like that positive attention and like energy and 
just connection in so long at that point that I like it was just an opportunity to just like it was a cathartic moment where I could just let all of that pain out. Yeah. And um and it was beautiful and it was everything that it should have been. And so like I don't know is Reiki really beneficial in the ways that Reiki practitioners will often say that it is? I'm not sure, but I I think it can be beneficial and having those right. kinds of moments are like super super amazing. Well, this was like this reminded me of the and I'm a I'm a massage connoisseur, right? Like six continents, thousands of masseuses. This is this is my thing. The best massage of my life to date was in Sydney in 2003 in Australia. I still have the brochure. Maybe I don't. Because I have the brochure for this place forever. It was in Darlinghurst. And what they did is like deep tissue massage, but they worked out and I didn't realize that I had never, at that point, this was a long time ago, I hadn't worked out like the giant car accident, you know, like I hadn't worked out the trauma of the plane crash. I hadn't worked out the trauma of 9-11. I hadn't worked out any of this trauma, right? Of like watching lots of people die and horrible things happen and you thinking you're going to die. And it was like, the it, it was like, I just started, but I don't know, like a crier and I was falling and it was not only the best massage i'd ever had but it was like this release of like all this negativity right yeah yeah and i i feel like like all right so i can give a killer massage <laughs> like i i don't know what it is but i get on here nanny nanny help <laughs> What I do differently than what a lot of people do with their massages mm -hmm. is like, I don't necessarily know all of the pressure points and I don't know like all of the techniques. Um, although like I am pretty good at doing deep tissue. So you're saying um, if you take expert out of the equation, you're pretty much an expert on massage. <laughs> like I don't, yeah, like I don't, I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm not a trained masseuse, but, um, I do try and make it, <laughs> but I do try and make it like a, a spiritual or not necessarily spiritual, but like a, an emotional experience. Yeah. Right. And so like, I'll have people concentrate on their breathing and I'll tell them, okay, like breathe out. And I kind of like do the massage in a way to where mm -hmm. like, I'm telling them like, Hey, just imagine your negative energy leaving. And I have mm -hmm. had people cry when I give them a massage, you know, that's amazing. Um, Mostly because they're like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> by the way, that take the expert. At, I know, buddy. I know. But that take the expert of the equation. Look, so anyone at home wants to look up um, Al Pacino, who did these coffee commercials. Right. And they are hilarious. And he's just ad libbing the entire time. And he's saying, like, you know, if you, it, you know, uh, if you take expert out of the equation, I I'm pretty much an expert on coffee. And it's like, well, no expert is that <laughs> like, that's the, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so I just, uh, any, any chance I get to say, if you take expert out of the equation, you're pretty much an expert. My grandpa at one point in time was, used to talk about how he loved black coffee. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah. Like my mom and my aunt, I remember one day they were like, oh, I don't understand how people can drink black coffee. It's just like not good. My grandpa's like, oh, I drink black coffee from time to time. And they're like, really? They're like, and he's like, yeah. And they're like, I've never seen you drink it. And he's like, yeah, no, I drink it like pretty regularly. And they're like, and what do you like about it? He's like, well, I guess. It's just you get more flavor, you know. You just have to add like a little bit of cream. You add a little bit of sugar. <laughs> He's like, and it's as long as you add a little bit of cream and sugar, it's fine. <laughs> so they're like, okay, so you like black coffee if it's not black coffee, if it's basically. Not black coffee. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They, they, okay, speaking of another fun one, and like just old white lady racist. Not me this time. So like at my wedding, like I, I rented out like part of like the, the North Shore of the Dominican Republic, which I love, right, for the wedding. Like this whole hotel, like all the surrounding villas, everyone was down for like two weeks. It was a mess. It was fantastic, wow. right? Like it was, a, my dad kept going like, is that another naked Irishman? I'm like, it is, daddy. Um, 
Mark, she's from Dublin. <laughs> so he like, asked the people there. It was a great time. <laughs> um, but one of my, my, so my best friend from growing up, she and her husband had just started this wedding photography company. Now I could give a d- about like in style celebrity weddings, like everybody, like I could ca- no, right? Like I knew this was going to get messy. I don't want any photographers there, but they were having trouble starting their business. Like their second kid was on the way. And so I was like, hey, look, in style, if you'll let my friends do all the photos and you'll pay them for it, right? Then, um, then I'll do it, right? Because like, got to help a buddy out. So I helped my friends right. out. And I mean, I've obviously known them since I was a little kid. So um, her mom, I flew her mom out too to watch their little girl while they were doing all the photos. And her mom, Shirley, I, she still kills me to this day, but I've never laughed so hard in my life. I was going somewhere. She's like, I'm like, Shirley, I gotta go there and pay for this. And she's like, how are you going to pay for that? With Mexican dollars? (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. I was like, it wasn't even worth saying like, we're in the Dominican Republic. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) there were like so many things wrong with it but it was so funny like i couldn't even stand it oh my gosh i was sure like i gotta pay for that with mexican dollars i was just like no no no, surely no no surely no no i'm gonna pay for it in in dominican money Uh, (laughs) now now question diane yeah um do you speak mexican (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, but That's... I speak American. I speak American. <laughs> um, I just want to do. Can we do like a really quick throwback to George W. Bush the second, or George? Yeah. W. Yeah, W. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite W moment? Nuclear. Or no, <laughs> um, a strategery of all. My favorite <laughs> is. First of all, he was always like clearing brush on the ranch. And I'm like, what? What is he doing? And how much brush is there on the ranch? And then strategery was the one that killed me the most. How about you? Too many, uh, too many OBGYNs are unable to practice their love of women. Of women. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the weirdest. It's, it's so weird. So weird thing. <laughs> and you know the difference Whoa. is like a normal like that would come out of our mouths like accidentally, and then we'd be like, that came out the wrong way. I'm sorry, everybody. That's not I didn't mean it that way. Right. Like when you say something like, Oh, it's his job to service young men. And I'm like, not what I mean. You know, like, right, like so you take it back immediately because you he didn't even know. He didn't even know. All right, Danny, because we, how, yeah. we I, I should say we should probably wrap this up because it's very yeah. late here and you've got packing to do, my friend. But as it, it is, it is Hanukkah week. It is the week of Christmas and all good things. And it is the new year is coming up. We will have another episode before then. I, I, we're not going to be as negligent as we were. It was like a weird couple of weeks. I apologize, everyone. But I just wanted to know if you had any like beautiful Christmas wishes or thoughts or you don't Chris, have to. Like, let me just say Christmas isn't really like my holiday. Like I feel like every time the holidays come around, mm-hmm. um, it's really just a difficult time for me because one, I think I get a little bit of that seasonal affective oh. disorder thing. Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. Like, I'm not a big fan of the cold. And then two, um, I don't know. I'm just like, it's stressful, you know? So I guess what I would have to say mm-hmm. is, um, yeah, maybe it's a little bit of a Grinch thing of me to be like that. But I know mm-hmm. I'm not the only one. And if anybody else is feeling like crap this year, if anybody else is feeling like, you know what? I'm just not in the holiday mood. That's okay. Uh, bear through it. We're going to make it through it. Um, and also, uh, I just wanted to give a little shout out, by the way, mm-hmm. to one of our fans on Twitter, hey. Elsie Moore. Hey, um, hey, I know, yeah, I know that you may not also be feeling the holidays this year, but you know, 
hang tight. Uh, we're going to make it through this. And before you know, it's going to be a new year. And we will be all right. So. Yeah. And as my mom and my little cherry. That's a good one. I like that. So, you, so you're saying you don't want to sing a carol with me. Oh, did you ask me that? No. No, I didn't. Because <laughs> I will... <laughs> I will I will sing a carol. Oh my gosh, pick one, pick one, pick one, pick one. Um <laughs> What's the I don't I don't know like what all the carols are. Uh, I don't know what my options are. Is Jingle Bells a carol? Jingle Bells is a carol. Angels we have heard on high, like Little Town of Bethlehem, Silent Night, which I think is kind of very hard for anyone sings, let alone people like myself that don't have a great voice. Um we can do silent night. <laughs> so, didn't it didn't the disclaimer just since we like a challenge right you're a crazy man you're a crazy man hold no, on all hold right on. so i'll give you all right i'm gonna narrow it down to two and then you can uh name the final okay. one okay. okay so we're okay. either gonna go really easy we're gonna do uh but like pick like a pick like one that i'll enjoy bells. all right or silent night <laughs> And we're only gonna sing the first, like we're gonna sing it out. We're gonna sing the show out, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna sing the show out. Okay. Um, I want you to look up "Silent Night" in German. Oh Lord. Yeah, if we're going for it, we're going for it. I don't know it, but like, it just always seems like it should be in German. Okay. Okay. Here we go. You ready? Yeah, and should we tell everyone goodbye before we start singing? Everyone, goodbye, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, all the good things. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. Lots of good other holidays coming up, but we'll be with you before those. And just know that we're thinking of you. Danny, I wish you the most fun beginning of your trip ever. May it be safe and merry and warm. Also, I need you to do something very odd for me. Don't ask me why, but I was looking up average world penis size by country, and I didn't know this was a thing. There, it's a it's a random thing I stumbled upon, but apparently Mexico is pretty high up on the list. Really? Yeah, I found that shock. Not like that. I was like, oh, I was shocked, you know. But like, I was like, wow, oh, not what I, ex- I, I actually I had no expectation, right, for any country. But it was like, yeah. it was just like this random chart, by the way, based on a lot of studies, huge sample sizes. So it's like, okay, by the way, who signed up? What ad was there in something that said, hey, want your penis size measured? Come, come do science, you know? <laughs> like, also, how did they collect the samples? Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> Somebody had to like answer an ad. It was, this is no self-reporting because you can't, in all studies, you can't rely on people to self-report because it's a hundred percent wrong right. right yeah so so yeah. someone had to like tens and tens of thousands of men around the world had to answer answer an ad somewhere that said hey come on get your get your dick measured and um and they did and they did you know who's top of the list who ecuador Re- oh you know i think i've heard of that before yeah because i, I dated an ecuadorian guy yeah, to yeah. to bear out. Um, he was statistically average. All right. Anyway, I mean, I'm just saying by U.S. That, standards, I would say. Okay. Well, U.S. Yeah, was like, way further down on the list than like almost every South American and Central American country. You know why? Why? It's the Teflon. It's and the, the microplastics. The, it's the microplastics. The Teflon. I don't know. Mother. Let's let's pull a Hugo Chavez. It's the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm not allowed to go to Venezuela, am I? Uh-oh. No, but but you know what? I just want you to do a little research for me, okay? I will. I will. I will. Um, like I said, I'm going to be interviewing sex workers. So yeah, and you know what? I don't want to know for gross purposes. I just want to know for scientific purposes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Also, that's going to totally be representative of the population at large. Oh, of course. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Only several sex workers. <laughs> these are gonna, these are going to be such accurate studies. <laughs> oh my lord. All right, should okay, we give man. this a try? 
Do you have like, should, should we play the tune somewhere? I don't know how to play the tune. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of a carol? All right. All right. Okay. We're doing, you got your German things? Um, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Three. Oh, sh- Okay, three, okay. Two, two, one. one. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, alle schlacht, eisen war wach, nur das Okay, wait, come on. Get right. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> that was beautiful. Was that not beautiful? Come beautiful. It's beautiful. Thanks, <laughs> <And> Danny. <laughs> Doodle. <laughs> <laughs>